everybody and welcome back to the workshop. This specific part of the workshop is brand new. This right here is the mezzanine that I built in the last mezzanine episode. And the intention for this place is to basically be the area where I do all of my handwork. Uh, that is all of the like very fine finishing, drawing, jewelry type stuff. All that stuff is gonna be done under here. A little bit more cozy, a little bit nicer space than just kind of being out and about. I'll be able to light it better because I have a structure right up above and that gives a little bit more opportunity for better lighting. I'm gonna add a nice texture to the walls behind me here, as well as making it so that I can film from both sides of my workbench, which is something that I think is gonna be really nice to be able to show off different processes here on the channel. So in the last episode, what we did is build this steel structure, cut our riveted beam, install it into the ground, and then get everything finished up here. Uh, since then, I did a couple of things off camera. I painted this last board here, uh, and then I also just screwed it down, just while I was walking around up there. I didn't want it to be uh, loose or anything like that. And so our pieces of OSB up there are solid and they are all painted black so it doesn't look as bad. The first thing we're gonna do is unload a trailer full of Show Shoogie Ban. Uh, a friend of mine named Josh Skogland here in Bozeman has a company that makes this stuff. The product is called Chatsubu. It is a beautiful, beautiful uh, burned wood. It's what my shop is trimmed out in and I think it looks just fantastic. The stuff that's gonna go back here is a little bit darker than the trim in the shop so it should be a very rich, kind of cozy, dark aesthetic. I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, so with that, we need to figure out where we're gonna put all this wood. I think we're gonna put it on the frame of my flatbed truck. There's no bed on there right now, but it's kind of the most unused space. Uh, that should be the most convenient place to put it. So we're gonna get this stuff unloaded, and then we're gonna talk about how we're going to trim out the wall here. Well, we were able to get the Chatsubu put up on the wall nice and quick. Josh showed up and while I cut the material to length, he used a brad nailer to nail this stuff in. Uh, it doesn't need to be super structural, just enough to hang on there. Uh, anything that needs to go into the wall afterwards, I will anchor into the studs anyway and it'll just have to go through that material. We also had to build a small box around where the water line comes into the shop. Just a little bit of two by four framing to kind of cover up where that water line comes in. And thankfully we had plenty of material to be able to make it look nice as well. Well, now that we've got all of the siding, is it siding if it's inside? I don't know. But now that it's on, we're gonna throw a junction box right here and send some flexi conduit up through the OSB and then I'll be able to drop it back down and have it lead to a switch on our riveted beam here. And then I'll be able to run it back up and run it to two or uh, in the future, more than two different kind of junction boxes, uh, which will mean that I will have a very cool old timey switch and some hidden electrical stuff. It also means I'm gonna have another junction box up there, and so I'll be able to run the air compressor up there without having to run another cord back down here, which will be very good. The lights are on. Unfortunately, my switch doesn't work. It doesn't turn, it doesn't turn it off. Okay, I think I fixed it. I'm gonna check, I'm gonna go turn on the breaker. Nice, they didn't turn on. I hit this. Oh my gosh! I think I understand what's happening now. I'm not using this switch properly. This is a 30 amp 220 switch. And I'm using it for 115 volt, which means that I'm doing things a little bit differently. For one thing, I took out the heaters that were in there. These are little fuses that basically make it so that things don't explode if something goes wrong with uh, something on the south end of the line. Right now I've got my two white wires in the area that says neutral. Um, that has to be crusty or something like that because it is not making connection when I do this. So I'm gonna swap those wires over to the outside um, in the area where it's not really supposed to be connected but because we're running so much less of a current through it, I think it will be just fine. So we're gonna go turn off the breaker, swap those over and then it might work. Nice! It was just, heck yeah. How cool is this switch? The coolest. Pfft, ridiculous. Well, the first thing I'm gonna do is try and get the air compressor put up top all by myself. Uh, this thing weighs about 135 pounds. Uh, I did it, but it was not fun. Uh, next step is to move in all the toolboxes, the drafting table, and last but not least, my big workbench. Uh, now this was built by a guy here in Montana, and he, I'm assuming, made it to push up against a wall, which is why the back is open. Fortunately, I've got some leftover Chatsubu that I can trim out the back of this thing in so that it'll look nice and match the rest of the mezzanine area. Ah! 
Alrighty, well, we, even though the, the air compressor is already up here and it's wired in and working, realize that it's really not the best place for the air compressor to be. There's actually a little bit of a utilities room where the heater and the water heater for the shop is on the other side of this wall, just on the far side. And I think that's gonna be a better place for it. It should shield the sound from coming over here a little better. And there's already outlets up there, so it should be no problem at all. Okay. You got it? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Good job, Isaiah. Thank you. That was a thousand times easier than doing it by myself. Make sure that this fits through. Oh wait. Oh shoot. Did you just hit something? I drilled into the heat system. Just the sheet metal for it. Fortunately, they make heating tape or a duct like a, like a steel duct tape or aluminum duct tape, um, something that can hold up to that. So that won't be a terribly hard patch, but all you need to do is shove that. You wanna just shove that, that hose through, Isaiah? Yep. Oh. Well, the space is now pretty much finished. And a neat thing about this is the way that I laid it out is kind of based around the two workbenches that I was planning on having under here. This guy and the jewelry bench, which I'm not quite able to have under here yet because of the fact that Harbor Freight doesn't have the toolboxes that I wanted to put it on. But the way that I laid it out is it's eight foot out from the wall and 10 feet out from this wall. So it's eight, eight foot by 10 foot. So it's a very nice place to be, uh, kind of big. I think it would be a little bit better if it was 10 foot by 10 foot because then this pleasant space would be a square space. Now, having a pleasant space to work in, whether it is physical, like this workbench and mezzanine, or whether it is an online website building platform like Squarespace, having a good place to work makes all the difference in the world. Because if you're working someplace that is limiting you, whether it's the tools that you have, physical or digital, you're not gonna be able to get your best work done. You don't wanna be limited by the things that you're doing. You also don't wanna have things that are like so complex that like you can't figure out how to use anything, which is I think exactly where Squarespace falls. It's a very powerful website building platform. It's very easy for people like me who run small businesses to be able to add products onto the website, to be able to show off galleries of work, to be able to do blog posts, talk about things like how cute Marty is, all of that stuff is incredibly easy due to their pre-laid out website designs. Now there's all sorts of other things that you can do. You can run point of sale systems through Squarespace, which means that you can be at a farmer's market selling something and run all of your inventory through Squarespace, which is just unbelievably cool. And because they're so focused on making it a pleasant space to be able to build a website, Things go quickly, it's very intuitive, but I'm not. And I built my website fairly quickly. It's changed over the years, so if you wanna make a big change to it, it's really not that challenging to change the whole website, whether that's the theme that you're going with, all of the fonts, anything like that. It's very, very straightforward. If I wanted to list this big old chopper up on the website, it's not quite finished yet, but by the time the video goes live, it will be. And it'll take me probably less than two minutes to get this thing listed up for sale on the website. I can take PayPal. I can take credit cards. And that's just a wonderful thing to be able to do because I don't want to be spending all my time building a website, dealing with the hassle of having to talk to a different web developer to be able to put something up on the website. I can do it in two minutes on my phone. Uh, so if you guys are interested in checking out Squarespace and giving it a shot to present the information that you're passionate about, go to squarespace.com and use code WillStelter at checkout for 10% off your first purchase of a website or a website domain. Thank you Squarespace for sponsoring this episode. With that, let's keep on talking about this place right here. Well, the mezzanine is now pretty much, I'm sure changes will happen, but pretty much finished up. If you guys watched the last video, you will have noticed that I've already been working in here for a little bit. I've been working in here for about a week now, kind of moving things around here and there, getting used to it, and I, I'm into it. I love a lot of different things about it. The big things for me are having access to both sides of my bench. Uh, means that I have basically twice as much workspace. And clearing off the bench is even easier because now everything has a place to go. Having this whole extra toolbox means that I have places for everything. Uh, now some things that I used to have right at hand are a little bit farther away now, uh, but the nice thing about that is that if I end up getting to a point where I'm like, hey, I'm walking over to get this thing four times in a day, I can just add another shelf and get a spot going for the things that I'm using all the time to have them close at hand. So give you guys a little bit of a rundown of this whole 
situation. We'll start over on this side. Uh, up top, we've got a video light panel. That's the one that I had that was kind of lighting up the bench in the last location. And underneath that, we have all of my sandpaper, 220, 400, 600,000, 2,000. Uh, then we have cigars. And then below here, we've got the shop roll. That's the stuff that I use for contouring my handles. In here, this old machinist chest, we have uh, mostly hand files pretty much exclusively hand files actually. There's a lot of like smaller jewelers files and stuff like that in there. Then back here, I've got my height gauge, a one, two, three block and my surface plate. Um, that is something that it's very easy to move on out here and then it goes back very easy as well. Up above that, I've got a couple of little cubbies and I've got my hand vise that I use a lot. I've got my layout stuff, so red dicum and a scribe. And then I've got stuff for uh, soft work holding. So red rubber, copper soft jaws for the vise, normally live over here, and then leather as well. So just stuff to keep stuff that if it doesn't want to be marked up by steel jaws, keeps it from being marred up. Then back here, we've got a couple different rulers and a level hanging on the wall back there. We've got this antique drafting table uh, that allows me to change the angle a little bit and change the height, but I've got it at a place where I like it. Uh, and the nice thing about this is because it's at a slant, it's not very easy to put things on here. And so this is not something that has filled up with junk as I've been working. It's not easy to put something there and just forget about it because it falls off. Up above on this little shelf, I've got my little uh, draftsman lamp. I've got a sketchbook, scissors, and a bunch of pens and pencils and stuff like that that I've been using. Then up here, I have a little magnetic strip that I've been using uh, as I've been sketching on projects and stuff like that. Like I was just designing the handle for this little hatchet. I can keep it up there. That way it's not in the way, but if I need to check, bring it down to check for reference, it's really easy to do that. Hiding right behind there is a a uh, little sketchbook holder. I just bent it up out of some quarter inch rod and it sticks into some studs that hold this uh, behind this kind of panel here. Uh, and then on over here, I've got this uh, old Kennedy machinist tool chest. This right here is a super old one. I'm not quite sure how old it is full of hand files, jewelry supplies. So things like my rubberized abrasives or burrs. And on top of that, I've got things like Band-Aids, Advil. I just ran out of tissues, but there's been a tissue box sitting here because I've got mad allergies right now. And then down below, we've got a measuring and marking drawer uh, over here we've got all of my sanding sticks. So everything that I'm using on all of my knives all the time. Over here, I've got a driver set, uh, so just screwdrivers, torques, stuff like that. Uh, and then underneath here, there's another kind of workspace, kind of a flex zone. Uh, and this is where I have all of my waxes and pastes and stuff like that, things that I use a lot. Uh, and then the first top two drawers in the lower part of the cabinet are both full of files, hand files. I use a lot of hand files. Below that are other random hand tools that I use a lot in the shop. A jewelry saw, the brooches that I use for clearing out the holes in my handles, little brushes, chisels, uh, my file card for cleaning out my files. All of that stuff lives one drawer down below. And then the bottom two drawers are full of finished projects or works in progress. Uh, some knives that I've made that I kept uh, or other stuff like that. Stuff that hasn't been shipped out is all in the two doors below that. And then this bench itself, the layout hasn't changed a whole lot. I've got my big Reed 405 bench vise over here. Uh, this is a swivel jaw, swivel base bench vise um, with five inch wide jaws. It's a great vise. It has been broken and repaired at one point, but I bought it for 60 bucks like five years ago. And then over here, I've got my little Prentice jeweler's vise. It was a swivel jaw. It's been broken and repaired. Uh, and then I've got this little 26 pound soda fours anvil. It's a cast steel Swedish anvil. Uh, it's super handy to have right here on the bench if I need to tap things together. It's got just enough mass that uh, it does an anvil's job, which is very nice, but it's not so big that I can't move it around if I don't need to. And it looks nice. Then over here, I've got my Fordham micro motor. This thing rocks. I use it all the time, it's ridiculous. Just a wonderfully useful tool. I use it for all sorts of stuff. And then over here, I've got a vice that was given to me by my friend, Matthew Harris over in Maryland. Then I put a power strip on the back of the workbench and that just allows me to uh, plug things in. The actual layout of the tools in the bench itself are very similar to how it was. I've got hand tools mostly in the top drawer. Uh, again, a lot of things that I use all the time. And then I did clear some stuff out. I've got a drawer just for like microfiber cloths for wiping down knives and keeping them clean and stuff like that. I've got a drawer for my scale 
which we spent like 45 minutes looking for the other day. Uh, and so that is nice and convenient now. Another thing that changed is I moved my shop cloth paper towel roll holder to right under here. Over here, we have another uh, kind of toolbox. Uh, this whole box is full of handle material, except for the top drawer, which is full of active projects. So stuff that I'm working on right now is uh, what lives in here. And then everything else is all handle material. I've got my ivories and exotic natural materials in the top drawer. I've got my exotic unnatural materials, my synthetics like ivory Westinghouse paper micarta, uh, and then some of the other like nicer synthetics that I have. And the next couple drawers are just full of the handle material, full of wood. Uh, and the reason why I have it separated by kind of wood figure type is because generally depending on the Damascus pattern, I think it's gonna look nicer with a curl or with a burl or a flamey grain. Below that is my drawer that is almost completely full of African blackwood because African blackwood is the bomb diggity. Under there is some of my more kind of like junky woods, uh, like stuff that I have a lot of, things like bowl blanks of wood that are fairly unfigured, some coca bolo, stuff that you could buy at like a woodcraft supply store or something like that, um, and then a bunch of wood scraps. And the bottom drawer is full of synthetic stuff, so sheets of G10, sheets of micarta, uh, and then scraps of that stuff as well. In here, we've got uh, drawings and patterns up here. I've got rolls of stuff in here. I've got canvas, I've got paper, and then I've got uh, some PTFE like shim stock stuff. Then down below, I've got my scotch brights, my steel wool, and then the bottom drawer is electrical stuff. So my meter, my wire strippers, stuff like that. And then using magnets and forged hooks, it's where I hang all of my personal protective equipment. Uh, and so it means I can move it around if I need to. Um, it's very convenient. It kind of hides it from the outside so you guys don't have to look at a beam full of respirators and eyeglasses and hearing protection and junk like that. And then a couple of the other things that have changed is I moved my big old uh, rack of steel over behind the bandsaw there. It's a convenient spot for it, not bad at all. And then I put a whole shelf right here that is still very messy. This one has not been organized yet, but basically all of my like regular use knife juices and sauces are up here. Computer and uh, camera stuff is up here. Uh, I don't know what I'm gonna do with this. And so that's about it. I'm looking forward to getting to work on this space a little bit more, keep the evolution going uh, so that it's a continually improving space. But for now, I'm thrilled to have such a pleasant space to work in. It's such a huge blessing to be surrounded by so many cool old tools and to get to do what I love in, in a place that I love. So I appreciate you guys for following along and allowing this dream to happen. And a big thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this episode and thank you to our patrons for patronizing us. If you guys are interested in this giant chopper, it will be up on the Squarespace website. The link will be down in the description down below. With that, I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye-bye.